Hi there, I'm Jonathan Stewart, an instructor at Hennepin Technical College. Uh, I do a lot of language and culture, um, conflict and uh, cultural type topics for customized training services. I want to share with you a model of intercultural conflict resolution and have you think about uh, or apply to your specific situation. This model is um, based on the work of Dr. Mitch Hammer and uh, we at um, Hennepin Tech are authorized uh, to be able to um, deliver his training and actually to give a personalized assessment that will allow you to choose or figure out what your intercultural conflict style might be. Dr. Hammer does all kinds of uh, hostage negotiation and kind of large scale mediation around the world and he's developed this model that I'd like to share with you. The intercultural conflict style model is really neat, I think, because it allows us to look at ourselves, but also to understand others, um, to see that we don't have to take things personally based on how they do problem solving or how they do conflict resolution. Um, you can see there's four quadrants here and a vertical and horizontal axis. Conflict comes from not only our differences that might be perceived or actual, but it also comes from our emotions. And so, first of all, how we express disagreement. At the top here, running along this, um, this vertical axis, are you a very direct person when disagreement happens? Do you speak directly to the problem? Uh, you know, or is it more indirect, giving subtle hints or, or not trying to you know, shame the person by bringing it up front, uh, beating around the bush a little bit? direct or indirect, how people express disagreement, and all of us kind of run across this spectrum. And then on the bottom, on the horizontal axis, how we express our, our emotions. Do we retain them and keep them in? Is it better for us to keep a cap on our emotions? We don't let them out, or do we express it? Our emotions come with the message, and we're able to um, use our emotions uh, when we're talking about conflict. Based on kind of these horizontal and vertical axes, there are four kind of intercultural conflict styles that we can look at. The first one in the top right corner is the discussion style uh, person. The person who has this style would say, resolution comes with the clash of emerging ideas. You can see they're very direct. They're able to logically lay out the problem and speak specifically to it. But uh, in terms of expressing their emotions, they are going to keep those in. Uh, it's about the problem, not about the person. And they try to separate those two. So they're going to keep their um, emotions in check. There's a great uh, quote, you know, uh, that we all know. Say what you mean and mean what you say. That's kind of a discussion style quote. And this is just one style, but one that's pretty common here in the United States. Uh, moving across. The engagement style, conflict style, would be someone who you can see very direct, but this time they're using their emotions, they're expressing their emotions, their emotions are coming with the message. Resolution for them comes when we can engage our emotions, uh, both sided, in receiving and giving. That might mean my tone of voice goes up, I use more hand gestures, um, and there are, you know, you can think of people you know that probably when they are motions start happening, they let them out, and they're also able to speak directly. An engagement person, a, a good quote, I think it's an Irish quote, it says, what's nearest the heart is nearest the mouth. And for a person like this, they're not going to want to calm down. You're going to have to meet their emotions. You're going to have to uh, match their emotional level and then maybe lead them if you want them to try to calm down. Uh, but emotions are important for them. As they're speaking directly, they want to engage uh, fully. In the bottom, uh, right corner here is the accommodation style. Uh, oftentimes we think of accommodation as the wet noodle going along with whatever someone says, but this isn't um, the way this term is used here. It's someone who is indirect in their communication, but also uh, keeping their emotions in. It can be a very hard, difficult person to read, but this person, resolution is coming for them with the harmony of things, so they're not going to want to bring the problem and attach it to the person. Maybe they're uh, from, a, from a culture or a context that face and shame is very important to, to keep. Um, so here's a great quote. Um, 
the, the first person to raise their voice, the quote goes, the first person to raise their voice in an argument loses. And when you're engaging in something, they're going to be more indirect. And we can look at it you know, in a negative way. You could call this person passive aggressive, but it it's, could be a, just a style uh, that they're using. And they're, they're trying to give the hint or the reason why they're upset in an indirect way. It takes being able to kind of creatively understand what's going on. The final quadrant is the dynamic uh, quadrant, someone who's expressive while at the same time being indirect in, in explaining what the disagreement's about or their, their uh, experience with it. Resolution here often comes with the, in the form of a story. They might use an idiom or an example uh, to give indirectly why they're bringing their emotions. There's an Arab quote that says, it's better to know the truth, but to speak of palm trees. And you can start to see a dynamic person might be more comfortable having a third party come in to mediate a situation or to look at alternative uh, ways to resolve it. In each of these different intercultural styles, um, there's some part that you can see positively and some part that you can see negatively. Uh, for example, a discussion person, well, they're logical, but maybe someone says they're unfeeling or uncaring. Um, but each of them have strengths and weaknesses. And learning about them in terms of yourself and others allows you to try on a different way of dealing with uh, a situation or a person, to understand that it's OK if someone's going to use their emotions, even if I'm a discussion person and might not be comfortable with that. Uh, when we think of conflict and culture, I tend to encourage people to think of culture in the broadest sense of the word, even as a as a world view. You can have someone who looks the same as you and has a lot of the uh, same background, but how they've been formed it takes into consideration personality and many other things. We're all cultural composites in some way, and this model is just another way to think about um, what to do, how to use that in a conflict situation.